These are the five things we stopped doing to lose 240 pounds combined. Because let's face it, if you don't change something, nothing's going to change. Exactly. And one thing that you and I both did is we overeat. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like a bad habit. Because processed food tastes so good. Well, it's processed food, but it's also like... You stuff yourself because you're not getting enough downtime, or you stuff yourself because you don't get enough hugs, or you stuff yourself because you're frustrated or angry, you don't really want to cope or deal with your emotions otherwise. And I noticed that we stuff ourselves with different things based on what we have around us. So like if we have tons of vegetables around us, then we're stuffing ourselves with fiber, which essentially will keep us full longer. But if we have a bunch of potato chips around, then we're gonna eat even more potato chips, be addicted to even go back to the store and buy more, and we just end up eating way more than we need to because our cells depend on being satisfied. We buy more than we need to. The fridge is stuffed. The pantry is stuffed. We eat more than we need to because our plates are like overpacked. And I remember like when I start serving myself less or when I was serving you less, we would get kind of angry and out of sorts. Like, how dare you? Like, why are you trying to control me? Or like there would be some kind of like anger inside. It's almost like driving the speed limit. It can sometimes feel like you're gonna pop out of your skin and it's excruciating. It feels like that. It feels like when you eat like a moderate portion for somebody who either grew up in an eating disordered household or has a compulsive eating disorder, it's just like a kind of punishment or uh, suppression, oppression. Like it just felt so like, oh, I deserve this. I want this, I can have this. I'm having a flashback moment to when you used to give me like this much ketchup on my plate when I was a little girl and I would be so angry. Right. I'd be like, where's the rest of my ketchup? Yeah. This is only like a teaspoon. Right. It's not fair. Like not you're fair. punishing me. But you let me have as much mustard as I wanted. Yeah. I was trying. I was trying. But I understand now why. I understand now why. And you also get comfortable being uncomfortable. Like overeating, we would like eat so much and then it's like, it's just a familiar feeling. And if you don't feel that, then it's like, well, I didn't eat enough. Or you get scared, you're gonna get hungry too soon thereafter. Or honestly, I mean, the processed foods taste so good. They're engineered to taste so good that you actually can't stop eating them. And then before you know it, you're re we're usually rushing, eating too fast. And then you don't even realize that you've overeaten until it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so stuffed. But it happened actually a while ago but we were rushing and so we didn't register. So let me give you one tip to do instead of overeating on the junk, the first thing you can do is take all the junk out of your house and give it away to your next door neighbor or your friends or a homeless person, like literally whatever you have to do, but get rid of it and substitute it all with whole foods. And you will notice a huge shift over the days. You'll also notice a huge detox and you might be the most angry person for a really long time because you're going to be detoxing off that sugar and flour. People say like, try to get rid of sugar for like one week and you will be a different person. Yeah. And, and I also want to say like, if you don't know what to do with whole foods, watch our channel on Instagram, watch our, you know, subscribe here. And we are offering tips all the time that are completely free. And we want you to like master the art of loving whole foods and having them taste just as good as that processed food that you used to eat. Yeah. The other thing that we did to lose all this weight was we stopped eating large meals late at night. So I used to do this a lot where I would not eat all day long because I was at school and I didn't want to eat in front of people or even you. And then I'd get home and I think you remember it because sometimes you'd make me a big meal because they'd be like, I haven't eaten all day. And then you'd make me like a, you'd make me a meal and then I'd like want to make two more. Or I'd have like a whole loaf of bread with butter. I remember I was really into that. And jam. And jam. Oh my gosh. I was really into that. Um, and it was kind of like, obviously it was an emotional play because I was like, oh, I'm going to starve myself and I'm going to lose all this weight. But then I also knew at the end of the night when I was ravenous because I had eaten nothing all day, you know, it's a consequence of eating so much at night and not eating all day. It's a whole, it's a whole cycle. And I know I'm not the only one that goes through oh, it. Oh yeah, no, I mean, busy moms who are also working, I mean, forget about it. They don't have time to eat and then boom, it's eight o'clock and they like can't go anymore. You gotta put the kids to bed and it's only once they're in bed that they can eat usually. It's really a bad cycle. Yeah. And the problem is, is that your glucose levels spike after you eat, every time you eat. No matter what you eat, pretty much unless you're eating raw vegetables or maybe just meats, your glucose is gonna spike and then you're not using the glucose and so by having that glucose spike and eating at night they've done studies that show that you will eat exactly the same food at 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. and it'll be a completely different weight loss result or weight gain result you are going to gain weight statistically if you eat food after 8 p.m. 
unless you're doing a workout right afterwards, which I wouldn't recommend anyone do. Someone commented in one of our videos, they were like, oh, I do a handstand after I eat. And I'm like, that's a great way to throw up. Yeah, I'm like, is this satire or do they actually do that? I think they're a satire. I think it's a joke. Couldn't tell. Yeah, but I think that eating late at night has been one of the biggest things you and I have done consistently that has really helped us to maintain and lose weight. Eating and late at night has helped us? No, no, eating, not eating. Did I say that? Yeah. Oh, so sort of again. So. Not eating late at night has been a huge reason why you and I have been able to lose the weight and keep it off. And I'd say one thing you can do to switch this habit is to do the 8 p.m. switch. So maybe instead of eating at 8 p.m., you start eating at 8 a.m. so you're not eating at 8 p.m. That's really smart. It's true because if you don't get enough calories in before 8 p.m., then you're the one who suffers and have sleepless nights. Because I did that many times where I said, okay, I'm drawing the line. I have a non-negotiable boundary. I'm not going to eat after 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., whatever it is for you, whatever your next step is. Uh, meaning meet yourself where you are and then step it up from there. That's our whole methodology. And, well, not the whole thing, but you know what I mean. Um, and so I didn't get enough calories in. And then I was like ravenous and I went to bed hungry and I couldn't sleep. And that's not good either. So you have to get enough calories in, like at lunch or at breakfast, like you're saying, um, whenever you can really. Statistically, it shows that when you eat a large meal in the middle of the day or late morning, you're going to be a lot healthier, you're going to live a lot longer, you're going to have a better inflammatory process which manages your disease potentiality and your aging. So you can only win by eating earlier and stopping a big meal at night. Another strategy that I used was also having a tea at night or even just a broth with no vegetables. I do that. Yeah, I do that. One of my favorite things to do, well, what, what I love to do that really works for me to not eat late at night. And this is a little extreme, so maybe, maybe like I can't do that. But what I do is I like to like eat my meals. I start my day at maybe like eight, nine o'clock eating in the morning. And then I stop eating around four or five because after four or five, I go to bed really, really early. But also I like to just like get my liquids in like after, after lunch, after 30 minutes after eating, I like to get tons of liquids in. So if you can stay hydrated, then you're probably not going to be as hungry. But if you're not hydrated, you kind of mistaken your hunger for thirst. So that's also a little health hack. I love that. Sometimes though, if you drink a lot of liquids after five, you're... No, no, I'm, not, I'm saying get your liquids in before five mm. so that you're not hungry after five. That's kind of my motto, mm. if you can. You know, and every day is a different day how much you exercise, you know, all the things. Also, I think this is kind of silly, but if you're a mom and they struggle with water, they could probably get a water backpack. <laughs> you know what I mean? With the, you got the little baby on? I think that could work. Honestly, I think uh, for a busy person, you got to have like three bottles in the car, you got to have three bottles in the kitchen, you got to have three bottles in the office, and you just got to like drink them. You don't like my water backpack idea? Well, I don't know if I'd want to wear a backpack all day, but I think wow, it's very wow, smart. Wow. <laughs> you should insert that in there. <laughs> all right. Um, another thing that we did to, well, I mean, I, I never really drank coffee, but this is something you did. Yeah, one thing I used to do was just drink coffee all day long, like just nonstop all day, just coffee, nothing else. But then also, I used to be a Starbucks addict. And so I'd get like these massive like ice caramel macchiatos and like frappuccinos and all these fun drinks that have like, who, who guessed it, 66 grams of sugar. If you had two, I had two frappuccinos every day the biggest ones, venti's and hundreds of calories, hundreds of calories. You guys, I cannot count on my hand. I can't, can't even count on my hand. How many people have told me, Oh my gosh, I can't lose weight. And all I drink is coffee all day. I'm like, Oh really? What's your order at Starbucks? They're like, Oh, it's a venti frappuccino. And I drink about four a day and that's all I drink. And I'm like, Oh, did you know that's like 2,500 calories and you're not exercising? I know exactly why you're not losing weight. So this is really important. Like Getting coffee at Starbucks is definitely going to not help your weight loss. Also, did you know that their coffee isn't organic? It's covered in glyphosate. Coffee is one of the most toxic foods to eat. That's not that organic. True? Yeah, they said it's one of the one of the most toxic foods you eat because it's heavily sprayed with so much glyphosate. That's oh, what they said. I knew that it was sprayed with chemicals, but I didn't know it was specifically glyphosate. I think I, recently I heard I said it came out. I could be that study could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know if that study's pure researched. Well, but listen, I'm talking to you ladies out there. Penelope is 19, but I know 
you ladies out there who are busy moms, who are running your companies, who are the CEOs of your household, your marriage, your, your, your family, and your business, but you are living off of the fumes of coffee. Like, you are running on fumes, my dear. It is a dangerous, dangerous path. Now, one thing we know is that it's an appetite suppressant. Woo, we love appetite suppressants, right? It's like a natural, you know, weight loss drug when you think about it. And it's fine for a time, but over a long term, you're going to be malnourished. You're going to have issues with your hormone balance, your endocrine system, and I just simply cannot in any reality or world recommend anyone living off of cafe lattes until 8 p.m. or 3 p.m. It's just not a good setup for your mind, for your, your gut, your belly, your weight loss journey, your long-term health, your inflammatory process, your disease prevention process, your weight loss journey. It'll work for a little while, but then it won't. And then you've got a bigger mess to clean up. So it's not that you can't order something at Starbucks. It's not that you can't go to Starbucks. I know Starbucks is like a ritual and asking you not to drink coffee is like asking you to change your religion for some of you. <laughs> so it's a ritual. It's like, a, it's like a comforting, warming ritual. And if people felt like they didn't, couldn't drink coffee anymore if they wanted to lose weight, they might feel like, okay, no, what but am I gonna do? So there's so many things you can do to replace this ritual. We do, we do a chaga latte, we do a matcha latte, we do all kinds of things. So first of all, let's talk about what you can order at Starbucks because maybe you like going to Starbucks. Maybe that's where you meet your friends, maybe that's where you do your work. So what can you order at Starbucks? There's a lot of things. So maybe your step up is a skim milk latte. And maybe you're at uh, one espresso instead of three, right? So it's just a step up. Maybe, maybe you want to see what your life is like without cow's milk and you go to your coconut milk latte or you go to your almond milk latte. I don't recommend oat milk for weight loss, but it's still a step up, right? You just got to try and see how it impacts you and your life. Penelope, what are some other things that they can order at Starbucks that are Step It Up approved? You can order a Frappuccino with skim milk. You can order a Frappuccino with skim milk. And then instead of getting your normal sh sh uh, syrup or classic syrups, I always say no classic syrup. And then you can ask for sugar-free vanilla syrup. They only have that flavor. Now, if you want to get your own sweetener and not get Alzheimer's disease and all the other diseases that come with. Well, we're, we, because the sugar-free one has aspartame in it. The sugar-free one has aspartame right. in it, sucralose, and a lot of other chemicals that you can't pronounce. And if my mom always taught me, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Right, so the step up would be the sugar-free, and then a step up from that is gonna be getting stevia. You can either put, like, they have little baby bottles of stevia you can put in your fanny pack and in your purse, and nobody notices or even sees you put it in your drink. Starbucks has now a monk fruit sweetener. They do have their own, but it's easier to use the liquid I've found because you can shake it easier. You can pour it because the, the granules don't, um, Im they don't melt as fast. Right, so that's good to know. And if you like flavors, there's a, I know uh, natural flavors aren't that great for you, but it's better, still better than the sugar-free vanilla. And then you can get any flavor you want in stevia. Right. Just make sure it says stevia and not stevia and erythritol because erythritol has been shown to cause some not so great side effects. And if you want to change it up and you want to have a green tea one day, maybe you could try that. They even or have steamer. A, they have a rooibos uh, tea that you can add milk to. That's a super big jump. Passion fruit iced tea. Mm -hmm. Without the lemonade, without you, the lemonade, you add stevia. But that's or a cold no drink stevia. again. Yeah. But, yeah, but these yeah. are these are just things that you can get at Starbucks Absolutely. instead. I've tried their matcha latte, but unfortunately, their matcha is a premix with sugar in it, so that's a bummer. So you can't get. I mean, whatever you're going to get there in that way, it's going to have sugar in it. But still, these are all options you have. So it's not like you shouldn't have coffee ever again. It's just that you may want to reflect on what nutrients you're getting in your body that are that's feeding your cells and keeping your body's mechanisms in balance and I heard something this morning and I don't maybe you can maybe you can help me with this one but I heard that if you drink coffee an hour and a half after waking up it's better than drinking it right when you wake up I've heard that too I, I yeah I've seen that study I've heard that it's interesting 
I think that people should consider dry brushing for the same kind of kick that they get from an espresso. Mm. I think people should consider taking a walk to wake up their mind and their bodies and their cells in, this, in the early morning sunshine instead of going right to espresso. I think people should drink water when they wake up instead of coffee. At least one, two, three, four, at least one cup of water before you drink your coffee. So I think all of those things are important before coffee. And I think like there's a life before you drink your coffee. And I know you know <gasps> what I'm talking about. And then there's life after you drink your coffee. I drank my coffee this morning and I was like, uh. and then I drank my coffee and I was like, and I got so much done. It was amazing. It is amazing. So, but still, I think there's that tender time of like tuning in and reconnecting with yourself and with nature and for me with God. And I know some people will think that that's like way out there. That's like, I don't have time for that. I'm not interested in that. But that's what I would recommend for those of you who are interested in that. It's very, very, very valuable. And the goal, of course, is not to be dependent on any caffeine or chemicals, right? Just for, for waking up. That would be the goal, that you can do that naturally, waking up every morning feeling vibrant and bright. And if you're not, that's a sign that you need to do something different. Another way that Penelope and I have lost all of this weight and kept it off over the years is by exercising. Another one is not exercising. Not exercising is something I loved doing. I loved laying in bed and being sedentary. I didn't go on walks, I didn't go outside. I didn't do any exercise at all. I just watched my mom do all the exercise because I envied it. And if you have friends that exercise a lot or look really great, another one that I used to do a lot was I'm not exercising. I used to not exercise all the time because I didn't feel like it, quite frankly, and my microbiome and my brain and my body was struggling on all the processed foods that I was eating in the dark room I was sitting in. So one thing that you should do if you want to start losing weight is getting outside and getting your feet in the dirt and the grass. It was crazy the difference I felt when I just put my feet in the dirt for five minutes. When I got sun on my skin for five minutes, when I even went for a walk, I felt so much better. The endorphins that were like flushing through my body and brain, it was, it was like life giving. It felt quite amazing. And even today I still like, now when I work out, I feel amazing after, especially jogging. Cause I think jogging like releases extra dopamine or something. I don't know, but it's, amazing. You had to use a lot of willpower in order to get that momentum going. And so I know if you're listening to this video and you're thinking, I need to exercise, but fill in the blank of all the excuses that might be in the way of you actually taking that next step to exercise, it's important and your life depends on it. And I remember how challenging it was and how confronting it is when you're out of shape to get into shape, but it's only a short period of time. And if you can trust your body and you can trust that it works, then I just really want to encourage you to take that extra step. Park a little further away from the grocery store entrance and take a few extra steps. Go up and down the stairs a few extra times and start to understand that your body need it, your mind needs it, your cells in your body need it. And I don't know how I could really live without it. Whenever I'm grumpy, Penelope's like, Mom, can you please go take a walk or do some yoga or something? Because she knows I'm just a happier, better person. I'm a better mom. I'm a better person because of it. It's by far one of the most important things. And one of the things, Penelope, that really accelerated your weight loss journey. Yeah. And the first 70 pounds looked a lot different with exercise than the last 70 pounds. Have. And these last 20 pounds, it looks a lot different too. Like the amount I've had to challenge myself and how many steps I've had to take has really varied and it will for everyone in their weight loss journey. We like to think when we start doing something hard that we can just keep doing the same thing. And a quote that we recently learned and I recently fell in love with was the magic is I think it was what was it the magic is in the magic you want or that you're seeking is in the thing that's like the most challenging for you something to that effect the magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding mm. and that is very it's a, it's a tough truth to learn but the more you get familiar with that concept the more you get familiar with doing the hard things all the time the more exciting it gets the more fulfilling it gets the more results you'll see. And I, and I think the more we do the hard things and see the results from those hard things, the more we're motivated or inspired to keep on doing it. Mm. And so in the 140 pounds I've lost, I'm probably like 
150 now, 150 pounds I've lost. I'm still losing. I am falling in love with this concept more and more every day instead of rejecting it. And I think once you can start to become that difficulty and like physically embody the challenge every single day, no matter what comes at you, your confidence in yourself, like you become invincible to yourself. And so you're no longer afraid of exercise or willing to make excuses to not exercise because you become the one who can do anything, who can overcome anything for 60 minutes. That's right. And it takes the courage to get there and you build confidence and trust with yourself. And then you start to really build a life that you love and that you're inspired to live. And that's what we do here at Step It Up. We partner with you to exercise more, to learn what routines work for you, to offer you ideas and suggestions and live classes and live coaching to get you back on track. So please comment below. We'd love to know about your weight loss journey, what things you've done to lose the weight, what things are working for you. We want to get to know you. So please click the link in the description if you'd like to get to know us. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, share and comment below.